So today we're going to review who is on the webinar today. We have a couple different panelists that are going to share information with the group. And then we're also going to talk about the benefits of participating in Grad Slam and talk a bit about the eligibility and guidelines of the program, as well as the exciting prizes that students can win. Then we'll review the timeline for 2020, this year's competition, and also talk uh, a bit about uh, past participants and watch some of the videos from last year so that people can get a sense of what this competition is all about and kind of what the finished products of the Grad Slam competition look like, sound like, feel like, um, and hopefully inspire you all to want to participate this year. And then we'll also have time for question and answer at the end. So in terms of introductions, my name is Tamara Shops and I'm the Assistant Dean of Graduate Strategic Initiatives here at the UC San Diego Graduate Division. And I've worked with the program uh, last year and I'm very excited to again be helping with the Grad Slam program because it is one of the highlights of my year and being able to work closely with students and see them grow over the course of months where this competition takes place. Um, and I want my colleague Shauna to introduce herself. Thank you, Tamara. Uh, my name is Shauna Slabiota. As Tamara mentioned, I also work in the UC San Diego Graduate Division, and I work with Tamara to help coordinate the Grad Slam competition. Part of my job, um, oh, I should mention that I've been working with this event for the last um, three or four years, and it, it truly is one of the highlights of my job. It's one of my favorite events that we do. Um, and for my role, I handle a little bit more of what I would consider the logistics pieces. I communicate a lot with the participants as they go through the rounds and I will give them information in regards to um, room details and round uh, timing and location and things like that. I also handle the submission of the slides. So we do have various guidelines in regards to what can go on your PowerPoint slides. And so I collect those and I answer questions about them and then I prepare the slides for the different rounds and uh, I just kind of answer general questions about how the competition works. So I'm looking forward to um, getting to work with you all this year. I hope that you all participate because it really is wonderful and, uh, and hope someday soon I'll get to meet you in person. So thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Katie Brecht. I'm a program coordinator at the Center for Student Involvement, and I'm very, very fortunate to partner with the Graduate Division. And what I get to do is I get to support all of the communication skills development. So we support all of the coaching and all of the training and workshops that you'll get to participate in. Similar to what Tamara and Shauna have already shared, Grad Slam is one of my favorite events every year, just because of the level of research that you all contribute and just the mark that you make on our campus. It's amazing to hear what you do and inspiring in so many ways. So I'm excited to work with all of you and look forward to sharing more about what our training looks like and what some of the benefits of Grad Slam are. Um, personally, I've been helping with Grad Slam for four years now. Whew, time flies when you're having fun, but I've been a part of the Grad Slam team for a while and I'm excited again to continue to work with all of you. I'm very fortunate as well to work with a colleague. My colleague's name is Frida Panina Alvear. Frida is our Associate Director at the Center for Student Involvement, and she's also going to help support kind of these communication development skills that all of us are going to be working on together. Um, and so Frida's on the call, but I think her recording. She's just going to stay on the audio. <laughs> and um, since I'm going to be chatting a little bit more later, um, I was just going to introduce her, but she's someone else that you'll meet throughout the process. And we look forward to working with, with all of you. Excellent. Thank you all so much for offering introductions. And I would love to get a sense of uh, who all is tuning in today for the webinar. So if you all are listening and you want to share uh, maybe your name and your academic discipline, feel free to uh, type that into the chat bar. Um, and let's see, it looks like we have someone from ECE joining us. Um, are there other folks? We'll see if anything else pops up here. Um, 
looks like we have someone from MAE and bioengineering. Very exciting. So I think um, education studies, biomedical sciences. One of the things that I really enjoy about this program is that any of our graduate students and professional students can participate. And so I think um, that is really exciting because it allows the different disciplines that we have here on our campus to really shine through and share with our community the different research that they are undertaking. And um, that's really important for all of our students and to have participation from all of the disciplines because really research is so widespread and the research that's happening in all different parts of our campus is incredibly relevant to the communities that we live in, the world that we live in. And this program is an opportunity for students to share that broadly. Um, so it's great to see that so many different disciplines have joined us today. And I encourage all of you who are listening in today to share this information with colleagues in your departments, in colleague, with colleagues that maybe you have worked with in your labs, or maybe that you're, um, if you're involved with student organizations here on campus, feel free to encourage anyone and everyone who's a grad student on campus to check out the program and consider participating. All right, so the, the first order of business is to learn a little bit more about Grad Slam and what exactly is Grad Slam? So Grad Slam is a UC-wide public speaking competition for graduate students, and it really aims to build research communication skills and at the same time have a forum to showcase the potential impact of research happening here on our campuses and specifically the research that our graduate students are working on. And across the UC system, there's uh, approximately 50,000 graduate students. So there are a lot of, um, you know, a lot of students contributing to the research happening on our campuses if we think of the UC system as a whole. So this competition is just one way that um, it, it really brings together and offers the opportunity for all of those graduate students to share about their research. Um, in addition to the campus-wide competition, there is a UC-wide competition each year, and it happens typically in May, early May, and it is hosted at the LinkedIn headquarters um, up in San Francisco. And so our campus champion, whomever that is this year, will also go on to the UC-wide competition up in San Francisco in early May. Um, so that just gives you a little bit uh, a sense of what exactly is Grad Slam. And Katie, if you wanna jump in and talk a little bit about the benefits of participating and, and the work that you do with the coaching program. Great, thank you, Tamara. I also wanted to open up the chat. If you all have questions, feel free to add questions to the chat at any time. I'm happy to answer questions. And I know there'll be time at the end as well, but if there's anything that I say that you are have questions about, I'm happy to respond. There are endless, endless, endless benefits to participating in Grad Slam, but if I had to pick just a few, this is what really I would focus on. You will gain enhanced communication skills. The ability to speak clearly and concisely is one of the most highly sought after skills. And Grad Slam, of course, you only have three minutes. It helps prepare you to do just that. And so if I, I think beyond um, just the labor and the time that it will take to participate, you will really get enhanced communication skills that you can use when you're applying for grants, that you can use to get fellowships, that you can use for your postdoctoral positions. Like there's so many ways that you'll be able to use these communication skills. You'll also have access to individual coaching. It's not very common that you get feedback and work with someone one-on-one -on -one to think about how can you communicate more strongly. And so I think that's one of the best pieces is that we really work with you one-to-one -to, -one to figure out how can we make your message even, even stronger. And so the coaching is a good way for us to build rapport, but we also work with some folks at the Teaching and Learning Commons, oftentimes university communications and the theater department to really build a comprehensive coaching team that will help you to be successful in this competition, but again, can be used outside of it as well. You'll get renewed energy on your research. You know, 
many of you have been working on this research for a long time. And so I think Grad Slam is just a really unique way to keep talking about the things that you're doing, but in a, a new fun environment. We also have heard from participants that one of the things they like the most about the competition is that it doesn't feel like a competition at all. You actually work really closely together and you get to learn about the research that people who work in labs across the hall are doing or labs in different buildings and you just get to learn about what they're doing and how they present it. And of course, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> so, so definitely look forward. Those are some of the, the benefits. Um, but like I said, you really get these communication skills, individual coaching, and a community from participating. Awesome. Thanks, Katie. Do you want to talk a little bit more about the workshops that we offer? Yes. So we'll go into this a little bit more later, but there are a couple of different rounds in the Grad Slam competition. And we are very strategic with how we have placed the training to prepare you to be successful in the competition. And so at first, what we're going to do is we offer sort of broad, comprehensive strategic workshops that help you build the content for your presentations. And so those happen first. Some of those are some of the initial things that we'll do to help you prepare. And then after you have kind of figured out what is the core content that you'd like to present about your research, what messages, maybe what analogies are going to use to convey what you're doing, then we'll start sort of this individual drop in coaching like I was talking about. And again, just to reiterate, it's very personalized. We work with you to think about what will make the most sense to a general audience. It's also place-based, and that means that we're practicing in the spaces where the competition will occur so that you feel more comfortable. There's a lot of research about presenting and practicing in spaces that are going to replicate the environment, the competitive environment, and how powerful and important it is to do that. So we want you to practice in the spaces where the competition will occur. And the last piece is we're very flexible and it's very comfortable. You don't need to come in with having a completely polished presentation. We're there to help you work through the process and meet what your needs are. Maybe you just have a question about a graph that you have in your presentation and you just want us to look at that. We're happy to help you with that. Um, or you can come with a polished presentation and we can give you feedback based on your polished presentation too. So we're, we're, we're here to fit all of your needs and help you through every step of the process. Awesome. Thanks, Katie. Uh, in terms of who you've seen participate in Grad Slam over the years, do you typically see grad students who are maybe uh, super comfortable with public speaking and they're doing this as sort of a, a personal challenge to themselves? Or is it more students who have maybe not a lot of experience with public speaking and they're looking to build that skill and grow that skill? Like, is there a, a typical Grad Slam participant in your perspective? I would say there's not a typical participant. That's why we have the coaching, right, to help you with whatever you'd like to work on. Whether you feel like you aren't a strong speaker, we can help you develop certain skills and strategies to be a more successful speaker. But we have students who come in and they are already strong presenters, but we also have people that we work with that maybe presenting is not your favorite thing to do. <laughs> and so we're happy to work with you to, like I said, to fit whatever need that you have. Um, I would say that there's a lot of practicing. So just be prepared on the other side, be prepared to practice and be prepared to, sometimes we have to be vulnerable when we practice, but be prepared to practice, um, but also be prepared to have a good time because we're here to learn and grow from one another. But in general, no, I haven't seen a typical um, range but of presenters, but really all students. And, and that's how the competition is designed to be accessible to everyone. Awesome. Thanks so much, Katie. So moving on to eligibility and guidelines. Shauna, do you want to um, talk a little bit more about that? Thank you, Tamara. So this is um, just some information in regards to who's eligible to participate in Grad Slam. We do open it up widely. So we really are looking for individuals from all disciplines, ends all years, any part uh, or any stage of their study. We, it's open to all current UC San Diego masters and doctoral students. This would include individuals who are in joint doctoral programs and may be splitting their time between UC San Diego and another campus. Um, so we really encourage as many people to participate as 
as many as we can get. Uh, we would love to hear from you all. The, you've heard us mention a few times, but there is a three minute limit to your presentation. And something that I wanted to talk about is that the timing begins once you engage with the audience. So this may mean once you begin to speak, once you begin to actually uh, speak about your work in a, in a presentation, it could be some type of gesture or hand clap or something else that you do that begins your presentation. That's when the timing begins. And so if you do have um, some sort of physical uh, thing that you're doing to, to engage with the audience, to uh, have a visual presentation of your work, that's when we would begin timing for the three minutes. Participants may be penalized for finishing too early or too late. And I think that maybe is in there because we are less strict about the timing in the earlier rounds. We understand that you are still finalizing your presentation, you're still working on um, you're still working on your talk, you might still be working on your slides. And so at the beginning, uh, we're a little bit more lax, but at the as you go through the rounds, as you are in the, the final round, certainly, we would expect everyone to pretty much be on that three minute um, time frame. Uh, but we do have a clock, a countdown clock that will be visual, visible to you so you know how much time is, is, has been taken up of your three minutes. So just be aware that you will have a visual representation of your time and that we're looking for people to be as close to three minutes as possible. I would like to mention that if you are going to be talking about a collaborative research project that you are doing, that you uh, talk about your individual contribution and you focus on that piece and, um, and not on somebody else's original research that might be done. And uh, in regards to the visuals. So you ha you can use up to three slides in your presentation. I say up to three slides, you do not have to use three slides. So just know that you can use uh, one or two and it's, it's totally up to you. I should also mention there will be a title slide that everyone has that lists their name and their department. And that's something that is formatted that, that we will provide the format on, uh, format for that, I should say. And everybody's going to have that one intro slide and that does not count towards your three slides. So in essence, you could have, um, I guess you could maybe think of it as being four. But if you want to have your title slide with your name and your department be the only visual that's up on the screen, that is totally fine. I just wanted to stress that. PowerPoint is the only accepted format at this time. And we, for our, um, for sort of the guidelines of our competition, we are matching what the UC system-wide event looks like. And so they have in their rules that PowerPoint is the only accepted format. And so that's why we do that as well, so that we can match that as closely as possible. The slides should be created by you and not generated by somebody that you are, um, that you have sort of hired to take this on. We do allow people to embed video or audio clips, but you cannot use the PowerPoint animations tab in the program. And uh, we do allow people to use props, but please note that we ask that you let us know in advance and that it's not something that's going to be very messy or, um, very loud or um, if, if you have questions about props, I would just encourage you to come speak to us. And so uh, we've, we've talked to, uh, or Katie talked earlier about all of the benefits to participating and certainly the prizes are a part of that. For everyone who participates in the preliminary rounds, you'll get um, some little gifts from Grad Division. Typically this includes a bag or a mug or some fun kind of little thing that we get every year. If you make it to the semifinal round, all of the participants will receive $100. And if you make it to the final round, um, typically, we have 10 students that participate in the final round. Um, 
that figure is not um, necessarily a requirement. It's 1500 second place gets 3000 and the first place gets 5000 so um, yeah definitely some great prizes that we're giving away and this would be just for the UC the San Diego round as well so just know that if you go on if you become the UC San Diego champion and you go on to the system-wide event um, there's also prizes that would that you would also receive for participating in that event if there's any questions about any of this just please feel free to contact me. Excellent. Thanks so much, Shauna. That's exciting to know that there's some uh, prizes to be had. <laughs> so in terms of uh, helping you all understand what exactly happens with Grad Slam, uh, we have the videos from last year's final rounds that are up on our website. So what, who you're looking at now are the 10 UC San Diego Grad Slam finalists last year. And it was a fantastic group. Like we said before, they came from a variety of disciplines from theater and dance, biology, chemistry, engineering, neurosciences. Um, so they were a great mix of students that had really engaging and fascinating research. I think they all worked very hard with Katie and the coaching staff to improve and to really dive deep into the process of learning how to communicate very complex research topics into um, easy to understand and engaging three minute talks. So what I'm going to do next is play a video clip for you. Um, I'm hoping that the audio works okay, but if for some reason you are unable to hear the video, please do type that into the chat bar so that I know and we can work on hopefully fixing that. So we're going to watch um, Joanna Wong's video from last year. Um, it was one of my personal favorites and um, Joanna, Joanna received the third place um, the third place prize in our competition. So. Let's, without further ado, um, watch Joanna's video. So next we'll have uh, um, a student finalist, Joanna Wong from the Material Science and Engineering, uh, talking about using color to fight infection. nature make the colorful world around us, such as flowers, butterfly wing, or an abalone shell? The first thing that comes to your mind is probably a pigment or dye. While those are true, nature has a secret ingredient, and she uses structure to make color. Take a look at the abalone shell and at the transparent crystal. Nature made both out of the same material called calcium carbonate. But the reason the abalone shell looks so vibrant is because if you zoom in under a microscope, you'll see that it's made up of many thin layers. So that when the light around us reach these thin layers, it bounces around in between. And only one color manages to escape and reach your eye. And because this color is due to structure alone, we call this structural color. So if nature can make thin layers into colorful things, can we as scientists mimic nature's structure to also make vibrant materials? In my research, I focus on converting dull, boring looking silicon, which is on the top right, into something beautiful and vibrant. I give the silicon structure by hollowing it out so that it looks like a sponge. And like the one you see in your kitchen, it's made up of dense and light layers. And because I can control the thickness and the spacing of these layers, I'm able to turn gray silicon into any color I want, as you can see from the picture. The most special thing about this structure is that it can get soaked in a liquid. And when this happens, the color changes. This is very important to us because it allows us to build sensors out of these sponges 
and to tackle real-world problems, such as catheter-related infections. Catheter-related infections affect over 80,000 Americans alone, leading to tens of thousands of deaths and up to $2.3 billion in hospital costs. One of the reasons this happens is because nurses don't know whether or not the catheters are sterilized. We help nurses visualize the sterilization process by embedding the silicon sponges onto the tip of catheters so that when the nurses swab the catheter, it changes from green to red. This tells the nurse that they have applied the alcohol on the entire surface of the catheter. This also tells them that they need to stop and wait for the alcohol to dry. And once the alcohol is dry, the catheter returns to its green original color, letting the nurse know that it's time to go and inject the therapeutic. So by simply embedding nature's structure on the abalone shell into the tip of catheters, we can use color to fight infection. Thank you. So that's an example of one presentation from last year that I thought was really interesting, really engaging. And it was very exciting to watch Joanna from the beginning when she first signed up for Grad Slam, kind of working through the different workshops and working with the coaching staff to build a presentation that was, I think, very easy to understand and made good use of, of metaphor and um, was able to help us see how the research she's doing could potentially solve a problem out in the world um, and contribute to, um, you know, making a difference in the medical profession. So um, I don't know if um, anyone else, uh, Katie or Shauna, want to comment or if we want to maybe watch another video of another contestant. Um, but in terms of um, how students engage with the competition, um, that's just one example. I think something that I would add, Tamara, is just that, and for all of, for all, everyone listening this afternoon, is that Joanna did a great job, but she, that was her final presentation. We definitely went through lots of iterations and lots of coaching and lots of um, trying things out, making sure it fit and was the right fit for her presentation. So don't feel like you need to have this finalized presentation. That's really where we come in with the coaching and the preparation is to help you build, to build what you want to convey your message. Yes, that's an awesome point to remember, Katie. Thanks for bringing that up. And I, I agree that it, it is a process and working with each of these finalists last year um, and just knowing that it, they didn't start out with the perfect presentation, that it was really a lot of hard work and a lot of trial and error and getting feedback and incorporating that feedback and, you know, just that it is a process and hopefully it's, you know, a process that once learned, you can you can bring that along with you as you're working to craft a conference presentation or even for job interviews. I think it's a great skill to be able to, to take something complex and, um, and do that. So um, any other thoughts to share? Um, this is Shauna. So just one thing that I want to mention that I don't think we've spoken about yet is um, the way that contestants are judged. So I would just like to let you all know the the judges sheet. The judges receive a sheet uh, that they use to um, to make comments and give feedback to all the speakers. And there's these different areas. So there's a section for visuals. There's a section for um, for clarity in your presentation and and. Uh, the way that the, the the presentation is sort of the, the flow of it and the order that it goes in and if it makes sense and um, in it uh, in regard or in addition to I should say um, just enunciating your your presentation and that you have a, a clear speaking style um, there's all these these different items that we're looking for and I just want to let you all know that this is not a secret we've used the same judging sheet uh, for many years and that we make it available online and so as you are looking at what Joanna did and you're thinking about maybe how you would structure your presentation or what it is that you would uh, want to talk about, I would just want to, uh, to remind you all that 
the, the different metrics we use are available. Um, if it's not online from last year, then I'll definitely go back in and make sure that that is posted. And so you'll know um, how to put this together and you'll know um, what you're being judged on in terms of the different rounds of competition for Grad Slim. Great, thanks so much, Shauna, for explaining a bit more about the judging and the rubric that we use. And we definitely will add that to our website. Um, I'm actually showing right now the Grad Slam website, which is on the Grad Life page and is got information about this year's competition as well as the final rounds from previous years. So you're welcome to scroll through and see who participated in the past. And if you do want to um, click on them and watch their videos and get some ideas, you are welcome to do that. You're also welcome to reach out to the past participants. Most of them are very eager to encourage people to participate in Grad Slam, and I'm sure they'd be happy to talk with you about their process and what they learned and what they um, uh, were able to achieve as they participated in the past program. If there are any questions, feel free to type those into the chat bar. Um, I don't see any yet, um, but we're always happy to answer questions and um, look forward to this year's competition. Uh, any other final thoughts from the panelists? <laughs>